good afternoon. My name is John Laycock. I run a transit-oriented nonprofit called the Theseus Project. I'm also a member of the transit advocacy group, Aura. I'm also speaking about the Campo 2040 plan. I drafted the comments that Aura submitted, <clears throat> and I'm going to read an excerpt of those comments. But before I do that, I want to emphasize that the city of Austin has considerable agency in this plan. The city, city is contributing more than $2.8 billion to fund its project, to fund projects listed in the plan. That's more than the rest of the local governments and the metropolitan area combined. <clears throat> uh, Austin does not need to quietly accept a plan that will surround it with sprawl and flood its street with suburban cars. Austin can and should demand a better plan that funds transportation demand management, pedestrian improvements, and cycling improvements instead of just talking about them. This is a plan for the next generation, and we can choose a better course. Here are the comments that Aura presented. Okay. To the Campo Transportation Policy Board, Aura is a grassroots organization composed of over 100 community activists in the Austin area. We are dedicated to a vision of a city where everybody is welcome and everybody's interests matter. <clears throat> the greatest city our asset our city has is its people, and it is at its best when it facilitates connections between those people. As such, we are writing with concern that the draft of the Campo 2040 Mobility Plan, how the plan lays out the next 25 years of transportation infrastructure and expenditures. It is a blueprint for how Greater Austin will spend $35.1 billion. Unfortunately, this plan seems designed to maintain a status quo of sprawling development patterns and limited transit use. Specifically, we are very concerned about the following issues. Uh, one, the plan takes as its principal goal to reduce and manage congestion for cars. Both of these goals show a failure to seriously contemplate what a multimodal transit system means. We're just looking at cars goals, nothing else. <clears throat> Priority should be put on moving people and mobility rather than vehicles. Uh, number two, the VMT projections driving the plan are suspect. Millennials exhibit a preference for urban living and for driving less that is already causing many traffic engineers to overestimate traffic predictions. These factors consistently lead to overinvesting in road capacity, which does not actually improve the mobility of people. Number three, even more critically, there is no consideration of how new roads affect land use. By enabling greenfield development in areas with no transit infrastructure, new roads greatly contribute to sprawl, which puts more cars on the road, creating more demand for roads, <coughs> and a cycle uh, that never ends and contributes nothing. This is how we get to a plan that says we are spending $18 billion on roads and our funding is somewhat limited. Four, it is deeply disappointing that less than 1% of the funds are dedicated to pedestrians and bicycles. Pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure has the highest rate of return on all transportation infrastructure and tends to be much less expensive than building new road capacity. <clears throat> Number five, the $8 billion dedicated to transit capital projects is heartening, but we are concerned that the plan does not pay sufficient attention to how transit is operated. Mass transit is effective when it is frequent, reliable, and affordable. The plan should give consideration to how transit is run and how much it adds to mobility. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. And then I have copies of the letter in okay. its entirety that I guess I give to staff. Yes. Um, yes, you can give it to, let's see, where's 